Hello, I'm Anthony, one half of the Prenti Brothers. For our Dragon Bane actual play, we needed a prison cell, a cage to put a model inside of. So I thought it would be a good opportunity to put 3D printing up against crafting. Which is better? Let's find out. When we first started playing tabletop RPGs, we didn't have a table. We played on the floor, and we had one set of dice that we passed around. And we rolled those dice into the lid of the 5e starter set, because we were on carpet. And we had a blast with that game. I instantly fell in love with tabletop RPGs. In those days, we had no maps, no terrain. Everything was theater of the mind. But eventually, we wanted some maps to better understand the combat scenarios. So we started crafting. And then we got a 3D printer and started 3D printing terrain. And after a while, we had a bunch of terrain that we could play with. But which is better for creating terrain? 3D printing or crafting? To find out, today I'm going to be 3D printing and crafting that cage I was talking about before. So I found a couple cages on Thingiverse that I liked and gave those a download. I'll put links for these in the description below. This one I really liked because it's got an interesting round shape and prints in one easy piece. The only problem with this cage is the mini that I wanted to put inside it wouldn't quite fit. I could have just printed it a bit bigger, but I also found this STL. It's got a more classic cube shape and the door opens, which is pretty cool. The only thing I don't like about this one is the bars all print separately and have to be attached after. Now you can print them attached to the base like this, but I knew they would be pretty delicate. Vertically placed, the bars have layer lines going like this, which makes them very likely to break. 3D prints are easier to break along the layer lines. Horizontally placed, the layer lines are like this, which is much sturdier. Unfortunately, that also means that they needed to be cleaned up and glued on individually. I used some accelerator to instantly set the super glue. This spray has been an absolute game changer for me as far as crafting goes. I'll leave a link to it in the description below. Although I definitely struggled with this part. I kind of just went for it. I'm sure there was a better way to go about it, but the solution escaped me in the moment and I was moving pretty quickly. Anyways, I got the cage glued together and I'm pretty happy with it. The opening door is pretty cool and the model actually fits inside this one. So on to the crafted cage. I started by cutting some wooden dowels to use as the bars. Now my technique for cutting these is terrible, but I don't know a better way with the tools that I have. So I cut a bunch of these using the first one as a reference for size. Then I sanded and cleaned up the edges of each bar. For the base and roof of this cage, I'm going to be using chipboard left over from Sean's web project. I'll leave a link for that product in the description as well. Once I had everything cut out, I once again just went for it. Glue, accelerator, prey. Probably not the best method. And I think my sloppiness did show in the final product. From there, I also added some coffee stir sticks to the outside to add a bit of detail. And I was done. The whole process took a little over 30 minutes. So here's all three cages after painting. At the end of the day, I think they're all good enough for tabletop terrain. But I do have my favorites. The 3D printed round cage is probably the one I like the most. Its shape is more complex than the other two and it required no effort to print and assemble. I think it's probably the clear winner. But the other 3D printed cage is pretty good too. The fact that the door can open is really cool, but I also think this one was the biggest pain to put together. I also really like how my crafted cage came out. 
It is a bit wonky, not every part is perfectly straight. I definitely could have put some more time into refining the crafting and assembly process, but I still like it. So the 3D printed ones are better. 3D printing is the superior way to create tabletop terrain. Thanks for watching. Or is it? While for this particular project, I think 3D printing was the best option, for other projects, it might not be. I think crafted buildings give much better results overall, and they're much easier to paint. But my printed buildings look pretty good too. We have a ton of printed and crafted stuff in our collection, and we use all of it interchangeably. If I went back in time eight years to my previous self, still sitting on the carpet, passing one set of dice around, and showed him all of the terrain and stuff that we have now, I think he'd be thrilled, regardless of the production process, regardless if it was 3D printed or crafted. And I think he'd fall in love with this hobby in a whole new way. So I had a lot of fun doing this and kind of want to do it again. So if you have any ideas of what I should craft and print next, let me know in the comments below. And subscribe if you want to see more RPG related content. Thanks for watching.